So currently the community is working on version 2.1 for Volta. Before we go into that content, first I do want to give a brief recap of some of the work that took place in 2.0, and that will give some context for the 2.1 development efforts. So 2.0 really represented a transition point for some of the Volta development work as we're moving to a new architecture format. So 2.0, the key introductions that are relevant at this point for today's talk are the transition to a microservices-based core, which was written in Golang, and then also containerization of the device adapter. So the two devices, device adapters the community developed were the Open OLT and the Open ONU adapter. 2.1 then builds on that foundation that was set in 2.0, but there are a few additional notes I want to make reference to here. And the first here is that we have a goal to achieve parity with the 1.7 functionality. The reason 1.7 is relevant for this discussion in addition to 2.0 is because while we were doing the development on 2.1, we did have limited code development taking place on the 1.x branch as well. The primary reason for that was to support the uh, release for SIBA 2.0 alpha, and that used 1.7, which we needed to have the technology profiles and meter bands introduced for that work. And then since we are at this point where we really made a big shift in the architecture for Volta, it's a good point also for us to be focusing on stabilization of that code and ensuring that we've done thorough end-to-end -end testing of the code at the same time. So uh, we have recently kicked off a stabilization brigade that David is leading, and so we have active work in that area today. The final note on 2.1 is that if you look at our roadmap on the wiki, for example, you'll see there is not a target release date. The reason for that is that when we did the, the planning for 2.1, the decision was to make this a scope-driven effort, not time-bound with a schedule-based approach. And so the eventual delivery date will depend on a number of factors, including when we get all the contributions required to fulfill the, the minimum requirements for that scope-driven release. And the scope was identified by the community in an attempt to meet the minimum requirements for deployment for multiple service providers. That way everyone could be working on the same code base. And next we'll be going into the details for the scope. So this is what we came up with at our last face-to-face -face meeting earlier this year. First item you see here is that we did a migration from, uh, to an open OLT adapter that was based on Golang. We started with Python, and that was the containerized adapter that was first done uh, for 2.0, and then we had work moving to Golang for the OpenOLT adapter. We're completing that work, which started in 2.0, and again, we need parity with the functionality, what was in the Python-based adapter, and then also bringing in the additional functionality that was introduced in 1.7. The next three items I'm going to group together. We have technology profiles and meter bands. We also are doing a migration to BAL 3.1 and supporting multiple TCONs in the architecture as well. So those three items are going to be working together in order to deliver the required QoS and the services for the release. A few of the other items for scope are we have a White Fox OLT device manager using Redfish and expansion of the work that started with alarms and performance monitoring. There's an FCAPS brigade doing work as well, one for Volta and one for Onos. Also included is IPTV multicast, and then making sure we have a look at the process for uh, upgrading the various software components for Volta. On the next slide, I did mention the stabilization brigade briefly. Once we wrap up the bulk of the work for the Stabilization Brigade, the plan is to circle back and take a look at Volta security again to see if there are any gaps that we need to address in the 2.1 timeframe. We also are looking at some enhancements for OpenOMCI. A few of the key items that were identified were expansion of some of the message types used. So using uh, adding support for the extended message format in order to resolve some performance issues, also adding in support for debug, test, and test result message formats, and that would be an, as an aid for troubleshooting and fault management issues. We have ongoing work for enhancements for BD Sim as well, for the broadband simulator. And then another item we focused on for this one is expanding 
Volta support to additional PON variants. And in particular, we're pointing to the GPON and EPON. So the goal is to have both of those supported in addition to the XGS PON that's supported today. Then finally, making sure we've done thorough testing and also looking at the framework we had for testing in 1.x, making sure that gets ported over and, uh, and covers 2.x as well. And then finally, documentation. So once we finally complete the scope for 2.1, then the question is, what do we work on next? Typically, how the community has been working is that we do the planning for the subsequent release at a face-to-face -face meeting where we can have the active dialogue back and forth and come to agreement on the target scope for the following release. We do plan to have a meeting, but we do not have the date identified yet. It's still under discussion. So once that's set, then it would be published on the wiki. So you'd be able to see the details there for location and time. And then also we'd be notifying the community as well. So we don't have a firm list of scope items on the table right now for our next release. But what I can provide is some of the preliminary scope items that we talked about in the previous meeting that would be candidates for this next release. One of the items that was high on that list as candidate was high availability for the device adapters. And then we have a couple others that were identified as candidates that support for multiple active NNI ports. And then also expanding Volta to support additional access technology types. In this case, G.Fast is the likely candidate. So that's a quick look at what we're working on, where we're going. Hopefully that will help give some guidance for how to interpret the roadmap, which this is what you'll find available on the wiki as well. You'll note I do not show the stabilization branch on here. We have created a stabilization branch as well for the work that's being done by the Stabilization Brigade. I believe you'll see that referenced in some of the later talks today. But that brings us to where we are. And then once we have the release for 2.1, the expectation is that continued hardening would happen as operators take that into their labs and begin their integration work. And I think this is probably a good point for me to remind everyone this is a community-based effort that's driven by contributions. So if there's something that you have particular interest that you do not see on the roadmap, or if the time frame that you see for a specific scope item of interest is not meeting your requirements, please feel free to uh, bring a proposal to the community and to contribute to the code to accelerate that work. So we appreciate everyone's efforts. And with that, I'll be handing it over to Bjorn for the next portion of this talk segment. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, my name is Björn Nagel. Uh, I'm, I'm with DT and uh, yeah, I'm their team member of the, of the DT Access 4.0 project and in addition to that, I'm acting as a co-product owner together with Sean from, from AT&T. Uh, and here I'm in, in my DT role more, and I would like to give you um, yeah, a, a slight overview about uh, a Volta implementation from an operator perspective. <clears throat> so uh, I, I would like to start with that picture. That's our, our Access 4.0 um, uh, inf infrastructure or architecture, uh, which incorporates um, significant parts from the, from the CBA architecture as well as SDN and NFV principles. And of course, uh, uh, one of our major aspects is the including of the, of the BNG functionality into that architecture. Um, yeah, but, uh, but my focus uh, today is more on that part, uh, which belongs to, to the access node hardware components uh, for XGS PON as well as for, for GPON. And uh, of course, for the, for the, um, um, for the control components uh, belonging to that, which is in, in our project uh, mainly related to the Volta, and on top of that, uh, as the SDN controller, we are using uh, Onos. <clears throat> yeah, uh, uh, regarding these Access 4.0 architecture, you will hear some more details in, in several other talks, uh, so I will not go pretty deeply into that and don't want to give you the, the, all the motivations and, uh, and, and uh, objectives behind that uh, significant um, transformation and significant uh, changing of our architecture. Just in a nutshell, it belongs mainly to cost efficiency, to lean to operation, 
uh, and um, yeah, that, uh, that, that are a few of the principles uh, behind, uh, behind that activity. Um, what we are focusing, uh, um, or what I would like to focus here today, is uh, about the, the Volta implementation and, uh, and uh, the rationales behind that. Um, why we are doing that, what are our major interests in, in Volta. We saw in the, uh, in the, in, in the few slides from, from Julie that there are a lot of items on the roadmap. We are, but that is a, co a collection from, from several operators, of course. Uh, so we are, we are not, um, yeah, we are, uh, we are just uh, focusing on a, on a subset of that. Let me say it in this word. Uh, but the, the, the main principles of Volta, as it is in the name, hardware abstraction, is, our, is also our main target. There we see, uh, we see a, a big advantage uh, in that uh, compared to our, to our legacy architectures. Uh, if we are able on a very low layer, close to the hardware, to abstract it and, um, and uh, yeah, to, to, to allow northbound, northbound components um, to be ren uh, vendor and, of course, also technology uh, agnostic. So that means that uh, it becomes much more easy, that, uh, that deals with the lean to operate aspect, that becomes much more easy to change uh, the hardware, which is, uh, uh, which is below, below that Volta layer. Um, that, um, that makes it easier to, to introduce uh, hardware from, from other manufacturers, that makes it as well easier to introduce new hardware, which brings you the, the capabilities to introduce new features into your network. So, and, and that, uh, from our perspective, is a, is a big step to increasing flexibility in that point. And uh, technology is the same. We have a, we have a, lot, of, uh, a lot of issues in our legacy world uh, to addressing technology-specific aspects uh, in very high-layer uh, OSS and BSS components. And also that uh, we strongly believe we can overcome uh, with this hardware abstraction and, and keep the technology specifics really down to the, to the hardware components. Uh, a, major, um, a major aspect to, to achieve that uh, is, of course, the support of the technology and speed profiles. We, we heard already about that. Uh, that is, from, from our perspective, uh, um, yeah, one of the one of the major points or one of the cornerstones uh, of this um, technology abstraction. <clears throat> um, yeah, the, the other aspect is that what we have seen in the, in the, in the past uh, few years uh, that the, the vendor landscape uh, or the manufacturer landscape for access node components uh, shrinks down more and more and, uh, and that's definitely uh, not uh, of our interest as an operator. We would like to see there uh, a much broader um, landscape uh, for, for yeah, hardware manufacturers as well as, uh, of course, uh, um, um, developers for, for the software components needed in this disaggregated uh, architecture. And, uh, and therefore, we, we believe that a, a disaggregation of bo these both components um, could, be, uh, could, or could, could lower the barrier for for, for some white box manufacturers uh, to step in into that market, uh, as well as for, for, for smaller uh, software development companies to, to stepping in and, and bringing their contributions to, to that framework. <clears throat> so an, another, uh, another aspect uh, which is uh, of, of our interest is the, uh, the support of the virtualization of the network functions. Uh, that comes together uh, with, the, uh, with, with the SDN controlling uh, via ONOS um, and, and other components uh, and also these uh, virtualization uh, of network functions uh, into, into um, yeah, x86 hardware or into some clouds, uh, cloud applications uh, that also uh, um, pays to the, to the easier to manage and operate the network. <coughs> So that's uh, that's mainly our interest uh, in in the in, in these um, ONF activity uh, regarding Ciba and especially Volta, um, and yeah, in the, in the last bullet point I, I just mentioned uh, future extensions to, to other uh, technologies like G dot fast uh, coming with the DPUs and then other um, yeah copper based uh, DSL technologies with the MSANs. 
but as we saw in the, in the, in the roadmap, that's more for more a candidate for a next uh, next release, not not for 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 2.0 or 2.1, which uh, or the, let me say 2.1 or 2. Dot something uh, after that is, is our basis for our MVP proposal, uh, which we will have uh, ready to to launch uh, during uh, next year. <clears throat> So to, to achieve that, we heard that it is, uh, that is um, yeah, um, an open source activity based on contributions uh, and, 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 and things like that. And therefore also we, uh, we consider it, uh, to be active in, in that community if we want to achieve our, our uh, internal roadmaps. And uh, yeah, for, for, for a legacy operator, uh, also that is not only a transition for the for the network architecture; it's also a transition uh, for the organization and the transforming process. Uh, and you, you will not have it from from one day to another. So that's a that's a long-lasting process. Uh, and and in the in the very beginning, that's where we are. Uh, we have to do it with partners, of course. So and therefore, you see what what I have uh, considered here or, or named as DT. At, D, at, at DT's uh, community contributions, um, will not not all of these are, are named with a with a DT label. So uh, a lot of these coming with a with a Radisys label. You see, there's a lot of code development uh, which comes from Radisys. Uh, our um, that's that's our kind of partnership. We founded some resources on on that side, uh, and um, yeah, and 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 brought uh, and brought our contributions in on that way. So that is um, that was the, um, the the fastest way to to be present, to be active in that community, without having all these skills and knowledge uh, on site in, in in our organization. <clears throat> so what what we as an operator, of course, can do, uh, uh, where we don't need so much help from outside, is we can contributing our own requirements. In uh, in in that project here, we are doing that with contributing workflows. That was also a, a, a quite a long process to, to be able to that, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to announce that it is online already. <laughs> so we, we, we could finish it pretty, pretty short before the, the connect, before that conference here. Uh, but we are at that point and we are open to discuss that workflow. It's, uh, it's available on the, on, on the, on the source where, also, where all the Turk Telecom and also the at and workflow is available. So feel free to check it, uh, feel free to browse through it and come to us and ask questions. So we are, we are happy to discuss it. <clears throat> yeah, it, you will find some numbers. Uh, these are collected our, our not our own contribution, but collecting our founded contributions as well. Um, and uh, yeah, that's uh, that also here in the, in the, in the lower uh, part of the slide, you can see which are the, the, the main areas we, we founded contributions. And that's, of course, you can imagine that also these areas where we have the main interest uh, coming from, from, our, from our internal project. So that's that's mainly, as I mentioned, the tech profiles. Of course, the migration of the of the BAL layer is an important thing because that comes with new features, which are important for for our workflows. Um, yeah, and some more. You can you can definitely read it by us by yourself. Um, so, but uh, but another aspect to uh, that's uh, that's from the feature side. So we we need to have a, a certain feature set to be uh, um, to be able to to produce uh, or to to have our workflow running. But on the other hand, um, we also have to have it in a in a carrier grade fashion. So we we need it in a, in a in a stable version. So we have to make this shift from a demo and trial versions towards uh, a mass rollout readiness and, and carrier grade uh, um, version of the, of the framework. Um, and that, uh, yeah, that, that um, we, are, we are not the, the one and only who has these interests. So therefore, the, uh, the, the stabilization brigade is already running uh, by, uh, and led by, um, by Dave Bainbridge. Uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure he has also a talk here afterwards, so he will give you a more detailed insight into that activity. Um, but that's, uh, that's also uh, that's our vision to came up uh, uh, with a kind of an of an of an yearly based uh, long-term support version, 
Um, that is what, what, we, uh, what we have as a vision, uh, what we have as an operator as a vision for, 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 these, uh, for these software framework. Um, and uh, there we have to address a few steps which are not so, uh, um, yeah, which are not, not, not so deep uh, in, in, the, in the community work today. That's uh, maybe uh, to improve the code commit standards and, uh, and maybe improve the, the automated testing framework uh, in the future. So uh, we know about that. Uh, we also will steer our founded uh, um, resources and our resources which we bring by ourselves, of course, uh, to, to, to contribute to exactly that point. Um, because we have a really a strong interest on, on, on that kind of a stable, uh, stable version. And, and only feature-rich uh, version uh, doesn't help so much. So, therefore, we, we absolutely support this activity, and we, we also support it from the organizational aspect with a resource found, founded by us from, from Reply. And that's uh, just, a, just a short preview uh, on, uh, on what, what or how the stabilization brigade works or the stabilization works. Um, uh, we, have a, we have a master branch with a, which is uh, still active and, uh, and all these new features were going into that. And we branched out uh, another branch for stabilization and that uh, there we have all this stabilization work for the, the increments and then we have um, we feed it back as uh, cherry picked uh, the, the, the bug fixes to the master branch um, for where we have the feature development. So, so to, to create, uh, to create a, a solid foundation for the, for the developers uh, which they can work on for, for, the, for the new features. So and yeah, in, in 2020 you can see there's the idea to have these um, stable version with an LTS uh, with a long-term support release uh, available. So that's, uh, that fits finally uh, to, our, uh, to our internal uh, release dates for the Access 4.0 project. And therefore, we, we will contribute and do our best to, to, to achieve that. That was uh, regarding the, 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 the controller components and the software components. We are also active uh, um, in terms of the hardware components for that. Uh, that is uh, uh, after the at and um, uh, colleagues came up with an XGS PON proposal for OCP, an XGS PON OLT proposal. Uh, we, 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 we took that and uh, created on that basis a, a, a GPON uh, proposal. A GPON OLT proposal, and uh, thanks to EdgeCore, we, we have it in. We have a physical box available. You can see it in the, in the showroom already. Uh, unfortunately, the, that one is a black box. Uh, so we also have magenta boxes, of course. <laughs> oh, <my God>. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, that's um, um, that's that's what what we are doing in in, in the community on the community side for for hardware. So and and also um, which is uh, not on the on the short term uh, roadmap, but also for long term, a white box DPU is um, could be uh, could be of our interest. And also for that, we we probably came up with an oops, sorry, wrong direction. Um, we will come up later on. So. Uh, I decided to conclude with that slide and not with a thank you slide. Uh, this slide gives you an overview about some other talks from, from DT colleagues regarding these uh, Access 4.0 architecture um, and, and also regarding some, uh, some overall aspects of that. Um, you can have a look on that, f figure out what, what is of your, inter of your interest and then feel free to, to attend these talks um, um, later on. The dates are mentioned here. If, if I'm reading this correctly, that between March and April, you would like to have both your GPON and DPUs managed via Volta SIBA? Is that, is that what you're showing here? Um, Could, uh, and why you say uh, we, we, we would, uh, you are right in terms of, of GPON and XGS PON OLTs. Uh, in terms of, uh, of the DPUs, um, uh, the, the decision, the architectural decision uh, right now is to have only the ONU part of such kind of DPU managed by Avolta. And then we have a, a transparent management channel for the, 
uh, access node part of the DPU, uh, which is managed by another controller. So we, we are not incorporated in, uh, in the current version of Volta, but nevertheless, that's a target, of course. So that, that is, from, from our perspective, a candidate for, for at least three dot something. Um, to, to incorporate also the entire DPU under these water umbrella to, to control all these access node equipment with the same. Uh, but stack. it won't be in the 2020 rele uh, LTS release, is that? No, that, okay. that won't be in. Uh, we got, we got three, more, three more minutes, so um, any, any other questions? Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Bjorn and Julie, for the talk.